second Corinthians wa Corinto wa pili chapter number 13 uh, sura 13 a picture series that has you know I've moved a few days but because of uh, a few events here and there I want to pick it up from where I put a comma. Nilichukua msururu wa mafundisho ambao wakati mwingi uliopita pale lakini kwa sababu ya mambo kadha wa kadha yaliyotendeka nikaairisha sasa naitualia tena mara sasa. We looking into a prayer that is made I think is the most said prayer uh, apart from the the, the Lord's prayer. Tuangalia ombi iliyofanyika tena kwa utele mno kando na ile sala ya Bwana. And we say it many times. Tusema mara nyingi that though we should look at it deeper. Ya kwamba tuwapasa kuitazama kilinini zaidi. Second Corinthians chapter number 13. Wa Corintho wa pili sura ya kuminatatu. This was the final thing that Paul wrote to the Corinthians. Hili ni jamo la mwisho ambalo Paulo mtume aliandikia kanisa la wa Corintho. As he finishes this uh, second letter. Haliku maliza mkondo wa waraka wake wapili kwa wa Corintho. Of course these are not the only two letters that uh, Paul wrote to the Corinthians. Ama kweli sisi ni akatu mbili peke ambazo Paulo aliandikia kanisa la wa Corintho. In theology they will tell you he wrote about four or even more letters. Theology ya takwabia kwa malianika kama nyaraka za pata nne au zaidi kupita. But as he finishes this second letter. Lakina ya kumaliza waraka huu wake wapili. He says finally brethren. Anasema atimai wapendwa. Become complete. Fanyikeni kamili. Be of good comfort. Kweni kwa tika faraja njema. Be of one mind. Verses 11. Mstari wa kumina moja. Kweni katika niya moja. Let me read that again. Finally brethren. Atimai ndugu zangu. Farewell. Ah, kwaherini. Become complete. Mtimilike. Be of good comfort. Mfarijike. Be of one mind. Mwe katika niya moja. Live in peace. Mkae katika amani. And the God of love and peace. Na mungu wa upendo na amani. Will be with you. Ata kuwa pa moja nani. Greet one another with a holy kiss. Salimi ya nini kwa busu takatifu. All the saints greet you. Watakatifu wote wa wasalimu. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Nema ya wana wetu Yesu Christo. And the love of God. Na pendo la mungu. And the communion of the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Na ushirika wa rom takatifu. Be with you all. Amen. Amen. That the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hivi kwamba neema ya Bwana wetu Yesu Kristo and the love of God. Na pendo ama upendo wa Mungu and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Na ushirika wa Roho Mtakatifu. Every time you are saying that prayer. Kila wakati unapofanya ombi hilo. And we send that prayer to one another. Tusema ombi hilo moja kwa mwingine. It is so powerful that I said you need to understand exactly what prayer at what you mean to whatever or to whoever you are telling. Iko na nguvu sana unapomaanisha kwa kile unachosema na kwa yule unayemwambia ama unayesema sala hiyo pamoja. We must not fall into a thing where we just take things at a routine and we miss out the power of the thing. Tusingie katika ule mtego wa kuzoea mambo ama desturi ya kuyasema mambo pasipo kuelewa nguvu zilizotanda katika jambo hilo. Ever since we were in school young and nursery and stuff like that. Tulipo kuwa shuleni shule ya chekechea na kuelekea kupanda darasa. We sang songs routinely. Tulima nyimbo kitaratibu ama kikawaida. And if you don't like me some of the songs I just learned what they mean when I'm already a friend. Kama uko kama nilivyo mimi baadhi ya nyimbo tulizo zimba. Nilijua hakika mambo tulio yatamka ni kiwa mzazi tayari. Yet we sang these songs religiously. Japo tulima nyimbo hizi kwa kujitolea muhanga. Every day you would sing the Baba Bakishi. Hila siku na muko na sema Baba Bakishi. Every day you would sing the Mabrigan. Uki na muko na imba Mabrigan, Mabrigan. Never knowing what that was. Usijue ni nino achotamka. Unfortunately the same we came. 
came with the same kind of a mind in church. And we do things religiously. You know, religious is a form of doing things. Something that you're following just because it is a routine and you think you should do it. But you never ever get to understand why you do it and what you are doing. And the worst you will ever do in your walk with God is where anything and everything you do before God is a routine. You're just doing it because you do it. You don't understand the power of doing it. The most dangerous thing and that's what Paul was telling the church in the Romans. He was telling them, don't get into a pattern. Do not get into a pattern. Do not get into a pattern. Do not get into a pattern. If you get into a pattern, you will miss out the power that is in the thing that God wants you to do. Even in your coming to church, I know you come to church every Sunday. I pray that to you, it will not just be a pattern. It will not just be because it's a Sunday. And so on Sunday you go to church. Because you are a Christian. Let it be something that you're looking and looking for and in the presence of God. That way, that way when you come before the Lord, something good will happen in your life. You will always benefit when you come before the Lord. Because to you it's not just a routine. When you lift up your hands, it's not because they worshipped him, say lift up your hands. You're doing it because you know the meaning of it. When you give, you know why you're giving. It's not just a giving because we give. When you go down to pray, ah, don't fall into a mistake. One woman listened to the husband. The husband would wake up every sun, every day, five in the morning, and he would pray. But the wife noted after a whole two months, the wife noted because she used to listen every day. This man would make the same prayer. The same prayer. So when they suggested, they said, honey, why don't you do this? Record your prayers. Record Then instead of having to wake up, just play the tape recorder. You just play because I have, I have listened. Same thing. You don't add a comma or anything. At a comma wongezi. Routine. Ni kawaida. Ni kibuagizo. Routine. Ni kawaida. And the day your walk with God just becomes a routine. Na siku kutembia kwako na wana kutakua kukue kawaida. You miss out on the power. Utakosa katika zile nguvu zenyewe. That God intended. Ambazo mungu alinuia. Listen to Paul saying that I may know him. Kiliza Paul wakisema kwamba hili ni pate kumjua. It sounds like an ironical statement. Inaka kama usemi ulio na utatanishi mungu. How can Paul. Paul say he does not know him. I mean, this is the Paul who Jesus himself preached to. He had an encounter with God. This is the Paul who God has been taking to the third heaven. Revealing to him things that he says he cannot even be able to write. This is the Paul that is saying that I'm know him. In other words, what is Paul saying? When I think I know him, I realize he has another dimension. Oh, when I think I know him, tomorrow he comes in a different 
different dimension. That's why the word of God becomes new every day. I tell you, you can preach one scripture whole year. You can read one scripture whole every day. And the Lord reveals something new. But you must break the routine within you. Refuse to do things routinely. That way you will never get bored. You will never get bored. As you kneel down, you will never get bored. As you pray, you will never get bored. Why? Because every day shall bring a new dimension. It shall bring a new experience. You should be hungry. You know, listen to me. When you're hungry over something, it's like every day you can eat a particular meal. Or like I can eat ugali every day. Or I can eat mokimo every day. But if I ate it over lunchtime, I don't mind eating it in the evening. Uh, because the hunger of the evening is different from the hunger of the daytime. I pray that you may be hungry for God. When you are hungry for God, my goodness, you will not mind being in church every day. You will look for an opportunity to come and take five minutes and lambo rabosha. You will not mind being in his presence because every day you are hungry for God. You are hungry for God. You will not wonder why people are in church every day. Why they are running to church every single day. There is a kind of hunger that will cause you to run in his presence because to you it's not a routine. It's not just a kawaida. It's not just a kawaida. No. Apana. Kawaida things are boring. Mama ya kawaida na boisha. You get bored when you do something just because it is something to be done. But when there is hunger, you don't even realize. You ate yesterday. You wanna eat again today. I pray in the name of the Lord. The Lord will give us such hunger, a hunger that will take us before Him, a hunger that will cause you to feel like you did not pray in the morning and you want to pray at noon time a kind of a hunger that will cause you to run in the evening to pray because you don't feel like you prayed in the noon time may God give us such a hunger I pray may God give us such a hunger if we will experience revival there has to be hunger for the presence of God has to be hunger where you're longing for Sunday my goodness you're longing my goodness when will I have that chance for the worship team to lead us in the presence of God you're so hungry for God but you're longing you're desiring for that moment you're desiring for an opportunity to kneel in his presence you're longing Longing for an opportunity to dance before God. Your longing, I pray in the name of the Lord that God may give us such hunger because there can never be revival if there is no hunger. It's no hunger. When there is that hunger for God, it drives you. It kills the routine mentality. So this prayer of Corinthians 13. We have said it many times. In many meetings. All every Sunday. The grace of our Lord Jesus. Oh my goodness. Do you understand what you say? I've talked so much about the grace. If you have not listened to it. Get to our YouTube channel. Channel. If you have not been around when I taught on the grace, please listen. Get back to our Facebook or YouTube channel. Listen to that series one more time. Today I want to talk 
about part P, Leo, part two of eight. And the love of God. Na upendo wa mungu. The love of God. Upendo so wa mungu. that the next time you're holding someone's hand, the next time you're looking at someone and telling them the grace of our Lord Jesus and the love of God, you will understand what is this love of God? What are you praying and wishing for your brother? What is this thing you're praying concerning your sister? Do I understand what is the love of God? Do I understand what is the meaning of this? I want us to pick a story that was given by Jesus in the book of Luke. I believe Luke chapter number 15. Luke chapter number 15. Jesus is talking and he has talked after he has been challenged by some religious people. They have spoken to him and they have challenged him. And chapter number 15 the Bible says then all of the tax collectors and the sinners drew near to him to hear him listen listen then all the tax collectors and the sinners drew near to him to hear him wakam karibia ili wamsikilize verse number 2 mstari wa pili and the pharisees and the scribes ma farisai ona waandishi complained wakanunika saying wakisema this man mtu huyo receives sinners wakaribisha wenye dhambi and eats with them tena hula nao this is where this conversation began. Tax collectors were hated. The Bible says in the sinners, they came. They were comfortable. They were comfortable coming near Jesus. Unfortunately, in our church, I'm not talking about Victor's Chapel. When we talk about the body of Christ, we want sinners to be uncomfortable when they come to church. We want to profile them. Profile them. Tax collectors, sinners, they came to him, they came near him to listen to him. But the religious people of the day, the far as you see, or the Pharisees, and the scribes. These were religious Jews. The Pharisees used to follow the law. Routine. They were used to return. In fact, their biggest problem with Jesus was because of routine. That Jesus is breaking routine. They would complain about people that were healed on a Sabbath. One man came healed. He's carrying his mat. On a Sabbath day. But what does the law say? You should not work on a Sunday. Carrying your bed is work. Why are you doing it on the wrong day? to them they want this man to remain blind because of routine if you become a man or a woman of routine my goodness you will miss out on what God is doing you will fight people you are never supposed to fight God is not a God of routine I say God is not a God of routine they complained about Jesus one time, the disciples of Jesus. One time they got into the field and they started eating wheat. And the 
Pharisees were like, what's wrong? This your disciples do not even clean their hands. The law says before you eat anything, clean your hands. Jesus looked at them and said, the problem is Oh, your, fun, your, your disciples don't even fast. They don't fast. And Jesus kept rebuking them. Calling them hypocrites. Because if I don't worship like you worship, who told you your way of worship is the right way of worship? That if you lift your right heart, hallelujah, that this should be the way, hallelujah. So if I lift my left hand, you have a problem with my left hand. The Pharisees had a problem. They're asking, how? Who is the, who you? How? How can he allow sinners to come close? How can he allow the tax collector? They had a problem. I wish all the sinners would come to this church. Okay, look at the way some Pharisees are looking at me. To come and hear God talk to them. Jesus rebuked the disciples one time. Because a sinful woman has broken a bottle. And poured on his feet. And they are complaining. The Pharisees are wondering what is a sinner doing wiping the feet of Jesus? What is a sinner doing using her hair to clean the feet of Jesus? There was silence in church. Jesus Jesus came to show us about the love of God. For God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten son. In other words, the coming of Jesus himself was a show of love that God was coming to show the world how much the love of God is. And in the interaction of Jesus with everybody, he was showing us exactly the way God is. And listen to me, church. If we are going to portray the love of God, we've got to be ready to embrace everybody. I said, we got to be ready to embrace everybody. We got to be ready to love one another. Now he gave a parable in that conversation. In, in that chapter 15, because of what the Pharisees complained, he gave a few parables. I just want to touch on what we call the prodigal son. He wanted to portray what the love of God is all about. That the Bible says there was a man who had two sons. And the younger son came to the father. And he says, Father, bring me the portion that belongs to me. I need the 
portion that belongs to me and the bible says the father divided these two uh, his properties by two because he had two sons and the bible says we are still in luke chapter 15 when this younger son was given whatever belongs to him he set off for a journey and he went to a far country and the bible says while there he lived lavishly used to everything he heard it was a disgrace to the father it was shameful to the father but the bible says while he went and became a citizen in a far country when everything was gone he looked for something to do and the bible says he got a sudden job to look after swines what we call pigs and the bible says it was during one of these moments when he was looking after this in fact the bible says that sometime give me that scripture very quickly he says and not many days after the younger man gathered it all together and journeyed a far country while there wasted his possessions with prodigal living and when he had spent all uh, uh, he arose as, there arose as a fear of famine in the land and he began to be in wounds and then he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country and sent him to the field to feed the swine and he would gladly have filled his stomach with paws that the swines ate and no one gave him anything but when he came to himself when he came to himself he said I have a father. How many in my father's hired servants have bread enough to eat and spare and are perish in hunger? I would arise, go to my father, and will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you worthy to be called your son make me like one of your hired servants and he arose and came to his father this is jesus talking about this young man he's been given everything i mean he's a disgrace to the father he's asked for his possession he's riotous he has run away finished everything He's trying to survive. Then one day, he comes to his senses. He knows and remembers who his father is. Remembers the love of his father. And he decides, well, there are servants that are living better in my father's house i refuse to be a servant in my father's house i say i refuse to be a servant in my father's house when you don't understand the love of god you live like a servant you don't know your rights you don't know what belongs to you he says okay i'll go back home i'll even ask my father that I don't even want to be a son. I want to be a servant. Because a servant in my father's house is living better than a son who is far, who does not know the love of his father. So he says, I'm going back there. I'll say, I'm sorry. I know I messed up. I can't be a son. Let me just be a servant. And he took a journey to go back home see what the bible says 
What is your Bible saying? When he arose and took the step, what does the Bible say? His father, Baba Yake. His father, Baba Yake. His father, Baba Yake. <laughs> when he was still a great way from wakati bado ako mbali sana yule kijana his father saw him babake alimuona had compassion akamhurumia ran and fell on his neck akakimbia akaanguka shingoni mwake and kissed him akambusu while he was very far wakati bado mwana ako mbali the father ran baba akakimbia because of his compassion as a father kwa sababu ya huruma zake kama mzazi because of his love that is unconditional kwa sababu ya upendo wake usio na mashaka the next time you're telling someone the grace of our lord jesus christ watu unamwambia mtu neema ya bwana yesu kristo the love of god na upendo wa mungu i want you to understand nataka uelewe that the love of god upendo wa mungu goes beyond the mistakes of that person unaenda zaidi ya makosa ya mtu yule goes beyond the weakness of that person unaenda zaidi ya udhaifu wa when you look at people with their weakness when you look at people based on what they have done and you judge them based on their their issues you have no idea what the love of god is able to do you have no idea about the love of god let me tell you why the father could not have waited for this son to get home because he would have waited but the father had to run and embrace this boy why was it so important because hear me so well such a rebellious son such a rebellious son according to the law I'm gonna give you that scripture this is what was supposed to happen the villagers on seeing that boy they were not supposed to allow that boy to get home according to the law the villagers were supposed to take stones and stone this boy to death because he is a disgrace to the father so the father knew to go a villagers i know what the law says but i'm not gonna give my son to the villagers hear me well the lord will not give you up to the will of your enemies to the will of your haters to the will of those who look at you based on where you come from based on the things you did the father is saying my lord will cover you up my lord we will fight for you my love because Deuteronomy chapter 21 verses number 18 let's see what the law says Deuteronomy chapter 21 verses number 18 this is what would have happened ah, media you are too slow today this is what the Bible is saying if a man has a stubborn and rebellious son who will not obey the voice of his father or the voice of the mother who when they have just sent him we are not hid to them then his father and his mother shall take hold of him bring him to the elders of the city at the gate of the city and they shall say to the elders this son of ours is stubborn is rebellious he will not obey our voice he is a glutton and a 
drunkard. This sounds like the prodigal son. He is a drunkard. He is gluttonous. That's why he has asked for everything that comes from the father. He has wasted it. He has wasted it. He cannot hear the voice of the father. So when the people see him, they know what is supposed to happen. Then all the men of his city shall stone him to death with stones. So ye shall put away the evil among you. Ah, the father knew it. The father knew the law. And Jesus is saying, this father is full of love. This father, he knows the law. He knows what's supposed to happen. He looks at the son. Why before he comes to the gate, before he comes to the villagers, he runs to the son. He says, you are my boy. I'm going to cover you from the villagers. I pray to God, the Lord and the love of God will cover you from your haters. Will cover you from the law. There are people who want you punished. There are people who want you to fail because you did not do this. There are people they are saying according to the law you are entitled to die. You are entitled to go in under. You are entitled to be ashamed. But I come to say the love of God. I say the love of God. I say the love of God. We will protect you from the people. We will protect you from the hatred of the people. The love of God, I say the love of God, that is unconditional, when they look at you, because of your mistake, or because of what you did, they caparehanda, they begin to bring their laws, because they are Pharisees, they don't care about you, but God is there, he's saying excuse me, this is my son, this one I purchased, this one I love, and the love of God that surpasses human understanding shall keep you the love of God the father reign because he needed to protect this boy from the villagers from the law this is Jesus talking sometimes I need to protect you from the law the love of God a woman is caught in the act and they bring her to Jesus. By Jesus. My question to these people. If you caught the woman in the act. Why did you leave the man? It's a conversation for another day. Not for today. But they come ready with stones because they know the law. They say, Jesus, we caught this woman. And according to the law, we're supposed to stone her. What are you saying? You know, they said that to test Jesus. And Jesus knew the law. It's true. It's true. That's why, listen to me. Sometimes we don't pray for justice. We ask for the masses of God. If justice was to be served to every one of us, me and you know, as a me and you know, 
Come on, look at straight on me. Don't look at your neighbor. Me and you know. There is a level you will never attain. If God was to allow justice to happen, Kama in your life. but his love that covers a multitude of sins. He ignores Anapuza. because of his grace. Jesus tells these people the one who has not sinned let him be the first to cast the stone so when they had continued asking him he raised himself up and said to them he who is without sin among you let him throw the first stone then he looked down and he started writing with the finger the bible does not tell us what he was writing but can i guess he might have looked at the congregation he says wanjala wanjala I know where you were yesterday. Joroge. Joroge. You did this. Ulitenda hivi. Omudona make ni maandiko. Kila mmoja akiona yake imeandikwa anatupa mawe na kuondoka. By the time Jesus finished writing. Kwa maana Yesu alipomaliza kuandika chini. He looked up. Akainua uso wake. There was no one. Hapakuwa na mtu. What was that? Yet the law needed this woman dead listen the love of god goes beyond the law i see the love of god goes beyond the law of man goes beyond the law of the people that's why he says i will have mercy on whom i will have mercy and embraces this boy. The boy has rehearsed. What is to say? I've sinned against you. Against God. Make me as one of your servants. See what the son is in son said to him, Father, I've sinned against you and against heaven. And in your sight, I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Look at this. The father did not answer him. He said, You keep talking. Whatever you're saying, you don't understand my love for you. No need that I as a father. How much I longed that you come back. How much I longed to have you back on my arms. How much I longed to have you back. So while you're reciting your stories, I am busy preparing to have you set on my call. Listen to me. It's clear. The enemy has used guilt to destroy many. And they've been unable to continue to worship God. Because you think God is against you. Because you think God is condemning you. The grace of our Lord Jesus. And the love of God. I wish you understand the love of God. That through that love, he wants to mold you to what you are supposed to be. He knows the molding may not take one day. He knows the molding may not take one day. Let me ask you one question. Some of our parents or some of our relatives, they have what people call or the doctors will call a chronic disease. A chronic disease means that for you to survive, you'll have to take medicine every day. Because of the love that we love our relatives, we make sure they have those medicines. Because we love them. We want to sustain them. Even if it's by medicine. Let me ask you, don't you think the love of God 
can sustain you kukudumisha in a situation katika hali even if it's by everyday grace hata kama ni kwa neema ya kila siku cuz he loves you so much matembe ya neema kila siku anakupenda while the son is talking wakati mwana anazungumza the father is busy talking to the servants baba anazungumza na watumishi sasa quickly upesi slaughter that lamb chini yule kondoo the biggest yule mkubwa yule get me a ring nipatie tupete get me quickly nipachinjo kwa mavazi mavazi quickly upesi i need him covered nahitaji afunikwe tena the love of god upendo wa mungu we must make merry lazima tushereke because my son is back kwa sababu mwanangu amerudi when we understand the love of god tunapoelewa upendo wa mungu and show that same love to the world na kuonyesha upendo huo huo kwa ulimwengu and to the people we interact with na kwa watu tunaosemezana nao this world will be a better world ah ulimwengu utakuwa mahali pazuri pa kuishi this church will be a better church kanisa hili litakuwa kanisa bora the fellowship will be a better fellowship shirika zetu zitakuwa shirika nzuri because the love of god kwa sababu upendo wa mungu is unconditional hauna masharti It's not because you did this or the other. Siko tu umefanya moja mbili tatu unconditional. Ni usio na masharti. What if God was to love you because you love him? Je, kama Mungu angekuwa akupende kwa sababu tunampenda? What if God was to love you just because you've done ABCD? Kama Mungu angekuwa akupende kwa sababu umefanya moja mbili tatu. His love is unconditional. Upendo wake hauna masharti. In the book of Zechariah. Kitabu cha Zakaria. Satan ibilisi brings Joshua the high priest. Akamleta Yoshua kuhani mkuu. I think it's Zechariah chapter number 3. Zechariah na kisia sura 3. Joshua the high priest. Yoshua kuhani mkuu is brought before God. Akaletwa mbele za Mungu by Satan himself. Na ibilisi mwenyewe ibilisi. To accuse him. Kumstumu. Because of what he looked like. Kwa sababu the Bible says he had feel the clothes kwa sababu alikuwa na mavazi na dhalimu ama chafu he looked filthy alikaa na mavazi chafu and so satan ibilisi comes to accuse him akaja kumshtaki then he showed me joshua the high priest chapter number 3 sura ya 3 mstari wa kwanza kisha kanyonyesha yoshua standing before the angel of the lord amesimama mbele ya malaika wa bwana and satan standing at his right hand to oppose him na shetani amesimama kwa mkono wake wa kume ili kushindana naye and the lord said to satan bwana kamwambia shetani the lord rebuke you satan bwana na akukemee ewe shetani the lord who has chosen jerusalem rebuke you naam na bwana aliyechagua yerusalemu akukemee wewe is this not a broad brat from fire je hiki si kinga kilichotolewa motoni Is this not a brand brought from fire? Hiki si kinga kilichotolewa motoni. Look at the next verse. Angalia mzuri ufuata. And Joshua was clothed with few the garments. Yeshua alikuwa amevaa mavazi chafu kama dhalimu. He was standing before the angel. Na akasimama mbele ya malaika wa Bwana. Then he answered and spoke to those who stood before him saying, Akajibu na kusema na wale walio kusimama nao kusema, Take away the few the garments from him. Ya ondosheni mavazi dhalimu kutoka kwake. And to him he said, See na kwa kile akasema ona removed your iniquity from you nimeondoa dhambi yako kutoka mbali nawe and we will clothe you with rich robes na nitakuvika na mavazi mazuri yenye ukwasi Joshua is brought before Yeshua ameletwa mbele before God mbele za Mungu by Satan na ibilisi mwenyewe cause he's feel that he looks feel kwa sababu alikaa mchafu and Satan knows na Satan anajua God will not stand this fear Mungu hatostahimili uchafu ama dhambi God looks at Satan. Mungu akamwangalia ibilisi. Say the Lord rebuke you Satan. Sema na Mungu akukemewe Satan. The Lord who made Jerusalem rebuke you. Bwana aliyetengeza Yerusalemu na akukemewe wewe. Why? Kwa nini? Is this not a brand brought from fire? Hiki si kinga kilichotolewa moto. I love the way the Kikuyu Bible puts it. Na pale kitu tafsiri ya Kikuyu inaiweka. Kaigeki athari geshiga kerute to mwakini. Hii si ni kinga kilichotolewa motoni. Yeshika kina ne mwakine kehe gedire king ama yo kwa motoni ili chomeke naishi ikwe jivu dirage somora bwana kan ondo kwa haraka mudu wothe ni oe ogiruta geshika mwakine kila moja rajo kutoa kinga kwenye moto ne keiru mweno mwe iko moto pande moja to ne kohe age kohe kwa sababu ilikuwa inachomeka 
naishi naishi gashikore to mwaki hizi mikinga zilizotolewa motoni na nikore hado shie na oiro kona mali kuna mkorora oiro shio ne komenya ogera amenya terere nishiga keu niko ya kengera hetekera yethire jehova aragithara mwaki hizo kinga kilikuwa kichomete wana kaondoa motoni from fire akatoa motoni Rare ni none goma Nilikuwa ni malizo na shetani Kayaradhara Wana kanyakuwa raka Wekiri orona no oiro Kuna kina no watu ni weusi tu unaona weusi Tura menya dinadhari ruo Hauna abari bwana nina You have no idea Hauna wazo kazi The battle the Lord fought for me Vita bwana menifigani For me to be here Kwa mimi kwa You have no idea Hauna abari The fire that was going through Mato likuwa na tewe You have no idea Hauna abari Were it not the love of God Kama si upeta I will not be where I am Were it not for that grace Kama si upeta Of our Lord Jesus Christ And that unconditional love Hendo siyo lima shalti Let's not be quick To see where we're passing to rebuke wa kukemea to hate na kuchukia to judge na kuhukumu keshiga keiro kikinga ilo tolo ilo nyeusi tole keire temweno mwe mani kwenye usu upande moja you have no idea hauna abari kabisa look at your neighbor tell them you have no idea mangere kileko mambia kwa mba huna abari the fire I was plucked from moto ilo tole wa kwao you have no idea hauna abari kabisa I'd be dead. Ninge kwa ni I've committed suicide. Ninge kwa ni I've been depressed. Ninge kwa ni mega na mzoto. I've been finished. Ninge kwa ni mensha. But the love of God. Lakini upendo wa Bwana has rescued me. Umeniopoa. I love one singer who sang and said. Napenda mwimbaji mmoja aliima na kusema. Lift me. Love lift me. When nothing else could do, you know, love lifted me. Love lifted me. Love lifted me. When nothing else could do. You know, love lifted me. Listen to me. Let's kill his empire. Let us embrace that love of God. And then understand the same love that covered you has covered your friend. Has covered your neighbor. It didn't cover you alone. And if it covered you, then that same love has covered me. I want you to bow down your head in the name of Jesus. And this is my prayer. That the love of God will lift you. I know you were conscious of the law. You were conscious of the law. Conscious of your mistakes. Conscious that you're now living as a servant. Because you feel you're not rightfully supposed to be a son. You feel you don't, you've not qualified as a son. You're probably free the challenge you've gone through the mistakes you have made do not qualify you to be a son oh every single moment every day when you wake up the enemy brings to you all the mistakes and so like this son you recite how you should not be a son or you recite why you're only supposed to be a servant oh the enemy knows that as long as he can high write that as long as he can drag every of your mistakes he can convince you that you are not having any right of but the love of our God the love of our God is there to tell you you're a son you're a son not because of your deeds but because of his love that is unconditional because of his mercy that are new every morning I know you made 
made mistakes. And no, you are not perfect. And no, you're not a hundred percent. You tried your best, and you never made it. But the fact that you are still saying, "I better be a servant," I come to tell you, the love of your father will not permit you to be a servant. The love of your father will not permit you to be a servant. He is saying today, "I want to cover you with my love. I want to cover you. I will not let anyone. I will not allow the law to crush you. Don't allow." the enemy to high right the law over your life. Don't allow the enemy to high right all the challenges and the mistakes you've made. All oh, the love of the Father is running to embrace you. I wish we would allow I wish you would allow to do that love of God to bring healing to your body to bring healing to your mind to bring healing and to cause you to be bold again in your service for God because the reason the enemy wants to highlight your challenges is so that you are unable to serve God because you will always feel no not perfect enough then when he pours this love it is that love that begins to help you to be like the father and to walk in his ways it begins to mold an obedient heart when we were in nursery we sang that Jesus love is very very wonderful Jesus love is very very wonderful so hard you cannot get over it it's so low that you cannot get under it so wide that you cannot get round it. So wonderful. Look at me before I pray and we say the grace. That song that you sang in your nursery school. That song that you sang in your Sunday school. Jesus love. Yes, is very, very wonderful. Jesus love is very very wonderful. Jesus love is very very wonderful. Jesus love is very very wonderful. So wonderful love. It's so high, so high that you can go over it. So what Paul wrote he's asking a question to the Romans what can separate us from the love of God what can separate you from the love of God look at someone and ask them what can separate you from the love of God give me that scripture in Romans we want to read it and say the words of great what can separate us from the love of God look at someone else and ask them what can separate you from the love of God what can separate you Yes, shall tribulation ama dhiki ama udhia ama other romans warumi let's read there and we leave this service today to some pale chapter number 6 i believe or number 8 of chapter 8 no um I 
I am persuaded. Chapter number 8. Sura yake ni ya nani? Are you there? Umefika pale. Are you there? Je, umefika pale jamani? Chapter va- chapter 8 verses 37. Ah, sura 8 mstari 37. Or let's begin from verses 35. Kwanza mstari 35 mstari. Who shall separate us? Ni nani atakayetutenga? From the love of Christ. Toko pendo wa Kristo. Who ni nani shall separate us? Atakayetutenga from the love of Christ. Toko pendo wa Kristo. Shall tribulation? Je, thiki distress au shida persecution au other famine au nja nakedness au uchi peril au hatari or so au panga as it is written kama ilivyoandikwa for your sake we are killed all day long kwa ajili yako tunaoaa kila kuchao count the sheep for slow tunahesabiwa kama kondoo wa kuchinjwa Yet in all these things lakini katika mambo hayo yote we are more than conquerors tuzaidi ya washindi through him katika yeye who loved us aliyetupenda for i am persuaded kwa sababu nimeshawishika that neither death kwamba si mauti no lie wala uhai no angels ama malaika no prince parody ama falme no power ama nguvu things present zijazo zilizopo sasa or things to come au mambo yajayo no height hakuna upeo no depth ama kilindini or any other created thing ama chochote kilichoumbwa shall be able kitakachoweza shall be able kitakachoweza to separate kututenga us from the love of god kutoka kupendwa mungu which is in christ jesus our lord would you lift your hands and celebrate the love of god this morning would you celebrate that love kusherekeo upendo mzuri I said would you celebrate that love? Nataka tusherekee upendo. I know the enemy had high righted things. Najua bi alikuwa amezingatia mambo fulani. That were already separating you. Yaliokuwa tayari yanakutenga. But go count and check that list. Lakini enda utazame orodha hiyo tena. He's already even told you. Amekuambia tayari. Nothing to come. Hakuna hata kijacho. Nothing that will come. Hakuna hata kijacho. If he challenged you about the things that you were there, even what is not yet here, it will not separate you from the love of God. Lift up your hands one more time. Let's celebrate the love of God. Let's celebrate the love of God. In Christ Jesus. One more time. Jesus' love is very, very wonderful. Jesus' love is very, very wonderful. Jesus love is very very wonderful so wonderful love is so Lord a big clap in Jesus. I like you to stand and blow that trumpet of victory every time the battle was won. Kila wakati vita ushindi ulipatikana. They would blow a trumpet. Wangepuliza tarumbeta to show victory. Ishara ya ushindi. The enemy that thought will stone you. Adiyadete kupiga mawe. The villagers that were waiting for you at the gate. Wana kijiji walikuwa na We want to blow a trumpet of victory. Wangepiga tarumbeta to say it is over. Nasema tumekiza. The love of God. Has fought that battle for you. The love of God has given you victory. Man of God, blow that trumpet of victory. Yeah. Woo. Woo. 
The celebration of the love of your father. For there is there for now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. If you are not born again, you have not received that love of God. I want to give you a chance very quickly. Anyone that is not born again, anyone not born again, you like to receive that love of God. Anyone in the service not born again? You like to receive Jesus? If we are all born again, let us understand we are not servants. We are sons. I say we are sons. And let us get ready for a celebration. Would we give Jesus another big coffee? share the words of grace as you share the words of grace understand the prayer that you're making over your brother and may that prayer every day it is said over you and every time you say it over yourself may you enjoy those three dimensions I'll pick it up from there as we talk on the fellowship of the Holy Spirit thank you Mr. Kamau for giving us 75,908 God bless you God bless you would you look at your neighbor and tell them you are loved of the Lord come on tell them you are loved of the Lord and tell them nothing can separate you from the love of God. Nothing can separate you. Do you believe it? I said, do you believe it? And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. May the Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. Enjoy the rest of the week.